the party is running itself and my wife and I are just kind of buzzing around. And, and later I find myself in the bathroom and now it's dark and I'm bleeding. And, uh, and, and my wife is attending to me and I ask, what, what, what am I doing here? What happened? And my wife's aunt pokes her head in the door and she says, you were outside slashing at mosquitoes. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, everybody. Jim, the Knife Newbie Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco from the KnifeJunkie.com. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Episode number 12 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. And we've got a great show, an exciting show, Bob. You had a chance to interview the Advanced Knife Bro. Yes, yes. One of my YouTube heroes, Advanced Knife Bro. He makes these amazing, tragic, comic knife review videos. You wouldn't think that so much would go into a knife review video, but he, he produces the best, I think, out there. I love him. And uh, we, had a, we had a chance to sit down and talk for about 25, 30 minutes. And uh, he's a really great guy. We talked about his process. We talked about knife collecting. And, uh, you know, we just yammered on for a while. He's a great guy. Well, he's got uh, over 33,000 YouTube subscribers to his channel, The Advanced Knife Bro. So uh, some good videos and a good conversation coming up. Bob, before we get into that, I got a question for you. Yeah, what's that? The question is, do you like listening to podcasts and audiobooks? Jim, it's the only way I read. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> I do, too. I do, too. And we've got a special uh, for Knife Junkie listeners. If you love podcasts and you like audiobooks, here's something that you want to take a listen to. Today's podcast is actually brought to you today by Audible, and you can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial if you go to audibletrial.com slash knifejunkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player. Again, all you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. What a deal. And thanks to uh, the folks over at Audible for being a sponsor on the podcast. Bob, without any further ado, I cannot wait to hear the interview. So what do you say we get right into it? Well, let's do it. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm here with one of my absolute favorite YouTube knife reviewers and personalities, and by far the knife world's king of batoning, the advanced knife bro. Not since the edged observer have we seen knife review videos produced with such virtuotic command over the medium while maintaining their own signature style. But it's not just aesthetics that set his videos apart. They are all completely scripted, and hilariously so. And Bro's deliveries of his own funny lines, including alternate pronunciations, always make me laugh. And for that, I am grateful. After all, what better way to deal with my own compulsion than to laugh at his? It's my honor to bring you the Advanced Knife Bro. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty well, going pretty well. So we're just going to dig into your brain and find out a little bit about what makes the Advanced Knife Bro tick. I, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are familiar with you. Uh, I've been following you for probably a year and a half or so now. And I think it's your um, the uh, the attitude of your videos that that comes through that that probably keeps bringing people back. You know, it's uh, you don't take knives as seriously as as uh, a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just start out with this. What's in your pocket today? What are you carrying right now? Uh, my Benchmade Pagan. It's sitting in front of me right now. Uh, it it was in my pocket most of the day, but uh, I've been opening and closing boxes and stuff, so I've needed to take it out a few times. Is that the double-edged uh, dagger? For it is. Part? It's a it's a um, chisel ground. So uh, I'm not really, you know, super impressed with the cutting performance of it. It's uh -huh. it's like it doesn't. You would think it would cut better than it does, but it, it's it's more about sticking. It's sticking. more about sticking, and you know, I, it's not something that I do. It's more like I cut things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, today I'm not expecting to get into any knife fights, so I'm just carrying my uh, my meager little Spidey Chef, which is uh, a, a gorgeous knife, and and mine has uh, taken on a bunch of snail trails, which to me is appealing, and mm -hmm. and and you know I like it if I put a little uh, leather fob on it, so I got a little a little fob on this one, which means oh, yeah? I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, it's it's like putting a ring on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I'm also carrying my GEC 71 bull nose. It's um oh I, GECs are on my list. Oh man, I think you'd dig them. I, mm -hmm. I just uh, recently was checking out your best slip joint knives and traditional knives, and and yeah, man, I think you would, uh, especially this bull nose. Yeah. It's the uh, sod buster and something so appealing about the the so canvas. They have a classic arc. shape, don't they? They do. They do indeed. You pull it out; they're not threatening, but you nope. can get work done with them. Yep, for sure. 
How did you get into knives? Why do you like knives more than the average person? Um, I grew up uh, camping a lot. We used to, you know, go to state parks. I grew up in Missouri and Arkansas. So fishing and and hunting was kind of like where I started out. And uh, as an adult, I've kind of moved away from rural areas and I have to work in cities where, you know, technology is where I have to, you know, my job requires that. And so it's kind of a way of getting back into it. But I've, I've always, you know, I've carried a Leatherman Wave for a long, or I'm sorry, a Leatherman PST for a long time. And uh, I just kind of started getting into them a few years back because, uh, you know, I was just looking for, I think the Spyderco Endera 4 was what kind of got me back into them, mm-hmm. was, was uh, looking at what modern knives are outside of multi-tools. And it's kind of, it kind of spiraled out. I didn't, I didn't expect that I would have a, a knife channel. <laughs> Right. It was a yeah, surprise. It's it's obvious from looking at your videos that you are a professional in in video production and uh you know your attention to detail and I I always love the way your videos look and they're not not in a pretentious way but you always have some very interesting thing happening visually and of course I think your scripting is funny. So were you uh for lack of a better term filmmaker looking for content and knives tickled your fancy because you'd always been using them or or was it the other way around? I think it was probably filmmaker because I went to film school mm. as uh, as a you know a twenty something, and I always kind of wanted to work in a more creative uh, outlet. So I started, uh, you know, I've I put out a few YouTube videos a long time ago. There's some really early ones on the channel I, that are just kind of like I, I didn't understand what YouTube was at the time. It, it kind of was like I just like being entertaining and make entertaining videos and. It's just knives are kind of the medium and they're a fun thing to collect. Um, I've collected video games in the past and, mm-hmm. you know, I've all kinds of things, movies too, but those are a little harder. You know, I was always worried about making videos about those because of uh, fair use and copyright and stuff. Oh, right, and right. I, I, I try to create content that's my own so I don't get dinged for, you know, improper use of things. So it's sure. like, it was kind of a, I guess, a utility thing to just start reviewing gear like that. Well, it also, it also seems like there's a, it's fertile territory because, you know, I've been watching knife review videos ever since uh, 2008 with nothing fancy when I Uh first discovered him. And, and uh, over the years I've subscribed to so many people, I've seen so many videos and uh, there are a lot of people who take it so seriously. And, and when I first uh, stumbled upon your video, uh, your, the first video I saw yours, I sent it to my brother. I sent it to a bunch of people. I'm like, check this guy out. He's hilarious just kind of like what the the climate of the knife world needs. Yeah, I uh I like making entertaining videos and I like I'm I pay attention to pacing and and the flow mm-hmm. of the video and I I try to make I try to make them shorter than other people who do the same thing. So, you know, kind of gives uh, you know, some incentive to to watch something that's not typical of the YouTube format that sometimes tends to draw videos out and sticks to one shot. So, well, I think that's what your scripting does because it's mm-hmm. obvious as you're watching it that it's going somewhere. And, uh, and you know, if you've seen any number of your videos, you know that they follow some sort of format. They do. They, they have a formula. They have a formula, but everything good has a formula, mm-hmm. you know. Just check out Homer. Yes, <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> but right. uh, so you know that it's going to go somewhere. And, and with the scripting, if you like your style of scripting, you're going to watch it to the end because there's always a payoff. There's a, there's a payoff that I put like, you know, I, I hide gags in there sometimes i do stuff mm-hmm. after the it's it's ended sometimes i do like an extent if i have extra footage left over and you know people don't have to watch that part but it's you know a lot of people have said hey i'd like the part at the end where you're not talking and i'm like yeah. i get it i get it <laughs> it's it's like a vamp and fade you know you're you're in music you you just listen to the thing repeat over and over the uh-huh. birds the birds chirping but you're you're watching you chop up some of that bamboo and earlier you meant homer not Simpson, you meant the the, <laughs> the, uh, the classic the, author, the poet, <laughs> the yes. poet. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> poet. I guess what you would call him, uh, you know, back then. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've ever read the Odyssey. I think I've. Oh, dude. I think I've read it. I think I wrote read it in uh, high school. I think uh-huh. it was the last time. Yeah. Well, the the version they made you read in high school was probably uh, translated in the 1800s. There's one uh, uh, Iliad and Odyssey by this uh-huh. guy Stanley Lombardo. He's a okay. professor at kansas state university and they and they are awesome that you should read them you would love them so they're they, a modern english version of it yeah but it's still in the in the same meter and uh uh-huh. just using slightly updated but you know 
the gods calling the goddesses calling each other bitch. They would have anyway. They did, you know. They were always bickering. So, <laughs> I mean, if they're killing people, like what's a little foul language, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. It's well <laughs> worth yeah, and turning them into cows and all that stuff. Yep. So, how how do you think YouTube has affected the knife world in general over the past ten years? Uh, I think it helps. It it helps it. I mean, social media is kind of like how a lot of you know knife knife companies don't seem to be most for the most part. Most knife companies aren't these massive multinational corporations they're kind of i don't want to call them small businesses but they're a lot of them are you know they don't have like automobile size factories right. and stuff so right. i think social media is kind of a is what helps reinvigorate you know selling knives because you know it's like a whole it's like collecting it's it's created a whole new world of collectors i think and i think just right. knives in general i mean knives there's a, there's a lot of other things you could probably say that about as well uh but you know objects that you used to only read about or see pictures of in magazines. Now you can see people talk about them and you know, it's, it, I think it's, it's really helped. You don't have your traditional advertising like you used to, like you can't right. put like knife commercials on TV because that would be expensive. So right, right after the cigarette commercial. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you, I guess you can, but like, I would assume it's like expensive, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, I think you're right. It's uh, it, well, it's exposed people. I mean, there are so many knives I've bought just because I've been watching a close up of someone's hand open and close it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, it draws you in, uh, you know, in a pornographic way. And in, in a way, I know that's not a new concept, but right. you kind of go in, in, you know, um, weekend mornings, you know, the, the ladies are, are in bed and I, I break away, and do my, my private morning things. And what do I do? I pull out my phone. What, what new night videos have popped up? <laughs> you know like I, right no i, I hear you it's it's uh there's a there's a lot of uh good content out there and a lot of people that are you know a lot of a lot of cool knives you know i never even dreamed that there would be so many out there that i would be owning now i have such a large collection it's kind of weird yeah, yeah yeah i know and yeah with every new purchase i'm like okay well this means i'm definitely gonna have to sell my x y or z and i and I was, well, maybe now that I have this, I need to look at the collection as a whole and then reconsider what I'm going to sell. <laughs> right, right. And this this goes on ad infinitum until until something breaks. And I'm like, OK, forget it. I'm not into knives anymore. You know, I'm into. But that has never come up. Wrenches, flashlights have never interested me. I know you do a lot of flashlight. What other kind of reviews do you do on your channel? I do beer reviews, too, because, uh, I mean, I've always, you know, not always drank beer. Like, I, I didn't drink beer when I was a child. Uh, I think it did. I think my uncle gave gave me a beer when I was like six or seven and word got back to my mom because like it was my brother. And I think I think I don't know if we were in his car. I It sound it sounds even worse the more I describe it now. But I it's like this really early childhood memory. He's like, all right, don't tell your mom. And my brother and I got a each just like a little sip of beer. And, you know, that was a, a family scandal for a long time. But I didn't start drinking. <laughs> You're like, don't tell her about the beer. Don't tell her about the car. Don't tell her about the car and the beer. Like, what? I feel like there was a cigar involved too, but I'm not quite sure. So that's we awesome. were we were way too young to be doing that. But it's like I guess that's just what people used to do. Like, all right, well, you say you want a taste of this, and this will keep you from drinking it for a long time. I, I guess that's how parenting worked back then, or yeah, <laughs> adult well, logic. You were allowed to be a lot chiller with your kids back then. Yeah, you know, we used to leave on Saturday. Leave uh -huh. the house and not come back until six, you know, for dinner. They had mm -hmm. no idea where we were, what we were doing. But and there was no phone call to keep track of you, you know, like nope. nobody, you know, there was no phones. There was the the phones were that you got to your house at the end of the day, then you checked your answering machine, and you know everybody <laughs> fought for control over the phone in the house. Right, right. Oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let, uh, well, let me ask you. Uh, I st I'm still on this YouTube thing. What's your What's your process? I mean, are, are all those your knives? Do you uh, do you buy knives to review them and then sell them? Do you like, how does that work? A lot of them are mine. I buy a lot of them. Um, subscribers send me knives occasionally too. Sometimes mm -hmm. people loan them. I'll take loaners if they're interesting or, you know, it's a brand I haven't tried before that I know that could get me some, some hits, but, uh, it's kind of a, a mix, a mishmash. I don't really have any sponsorship deals and I don't have any, I've, I occasionally will work with the company. I think cold steel sent me a knife. SC sent me one before, um, but it's just usually like one-off things. I don't, I don't really have a uh, retailers I I tend to work with or anything. Um, it seems it seems people are very concerned uh, once uh, they hear that a reviewer has received a product from a company that they're going to be a shill for that company. And, right. And uh, it, it, I always kind of find it laughable that people feel the need to put that disclaimer in there. I get it. 
you know, mm-hmm. you want to maintain credibility. Uh, right. Nick, Nick Shabazz always does that. Puts mm-hmm. it in there. And I can see, you know, why he does that. But I put, um, I put it in there too. If some, if a company gives it to me, like sometimes, you know, if somebody loans me a knife, I really don't feel like that's a, uh, something that I need to disclose, especially sometimes people are like, you know, don't, don't bring me up at all, right, which is right. fine because it's just a knife that some person has loaned me. But when a company sends me something, I do like to put, you know, it's donated or whatever. So you can make up your mind if I'm shilling for them. And, but since I tend to not stick with one company and, you know, it's kind of a, I probably only worked with five companies last year. I just, uh-huh. I just kind of like do one off things and, you know, it's, I, the way I look at it is it's one less knife I have to buy. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's something that I, I agree to because I like it anyway. From my perspective, it, it just shows more credibility. Yeah. And I like to main, I, I like to maintain an independence like that. I like to have a, a voice and I don't want s- I don't want to have to, somebody sends me something that I'm not, that there's, that doesn't interest me, you know, like in a, it's so ridiculous. It's, it's fun or it's, I want to, I want to not, I, I want to not show for a person. I want them to send me something and something that I genuinely like, not go, well, this is really cool. I think you should really buy it. I'm really impressed by this one. And I didn't think I would be. There's like that script that yeah, people yeah, yeah. tend to go through. <laughs> I thought this was a total piece of crap, but I got it for free. So really, it's awesome. Go yeah. So I, you know, people see through that and I just, I'm a, if, if anything, I try to be upfront with people and some, somebody asked me the other day, like if I, oh man, I can't believe you, you bought this. I think it was a, it was a backpack. And I said, oh, did I forget to put the disclaimer in there? And somebody's like, no, you put it in there. And I'm like, oh, okay. What? Good. <laughs> I, I, it's like a thing. Like I got to put it in there. I don't, you know, uh, it, it makes sense. It's like full disclosure, at least that it's way. A full uh, disclosure and people can make up their own mind. That's, that's what my channel is about. I say something and you make up your own mind. So I've, I have noticed, uh, occasionally in videos, you will, uh, lampoon a, um, a comment that you've gotten, you mm-hmm. know, people yes. take this shit so seriously. It's, it's crazy. It, I, I have my own theories about it, but uh, mm-hmm. do, do you think as a subculture, uh, we're going just a little bit too hard if we're, if we're spending our time sending negative comments in? Now, me personally, like there's, there's content and there are people on the internet, just like everybody has opinions of what they like and what they don't like, right? Yeah. YouTube is one of those places where you have to go and search for things. It's not like you're sitting in a room and you're having to watch a stupid show with your family or whatever. So people seek it out. And I've watched stuff before and, you know, I'm like, this is really not for me. And I usually don't go below and give my opinion on why I think this is the worst thing ever when a lot of people like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, I don't I don't understand the energy people put in to telling the world they don't like something or, or to just go out of their way to be mean to people yes. because you don't do that in public. Like, I don't walk up to somebody and go, I think your hat's stupid. And here's why, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. keep it to yourself. but. And and that's the thing is I get comments like that and and that's something that happens and I'll talk them you know I'll, I'll talk to them and if they continue to be ignorant sometimes it's like I have to put them on the block list because I'm doing them a favor right they're wasting their time <laughs> yeah no doubt no doubt maybe by you blocking them they're they're gonna go off and 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 do something in their life do something we're we're not gonna get into but you know if, if somebody has disagreements about whether they like something like I am all for respectful disagreements on things but. When people are just mean, it's just, I don't, I don't understand it because I don't do that myself. I don't go to other, other people's videos and right. shit on them, you know? It's like, uh, it's like on the road. I would be appalled if people could hear what I was saying about them when we're driving. You know, that's the one time I, right. I just turn into such a, <laughs> such a bad person. And I'm uh-huh. like, man, I would never be saying this to their face. <laughs> like this, it, this old lady, I would never tell her what I think of her. Yeah. It's a way to vent. If people behaved on the internet, like they do in real life. Things would probably be better. <laughs> yeah, probably. There'd but, be a lot more handshakes. and. Yeah. I'm not saying people have to like me. I'm just saying, hey, if you feel the need to be negative, you know, keep it to yourself. Just Go like your it. parents used to tell you. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So what, what kind of knives do you have in your personal collection? I, I assume that sometimes uh, you, you, have, you must have a stack over there that's for review that's maybe on loan and then a stack over or a case over here that's all mine. What kind of stuff is all yours? I have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Um, I, I have a lot of folding knives and a lot of fixed blades. I, right now I don't have any loaners. I have Mm -hmm. uh, one or two donations that I'm going to review later, but, uh, I try to keep my loaners to a minimum because I like to not hold on to people's gear. I don't want to be the, well, I sent advanced knife bro something like three years ago and he never got back. I'm not that guy. I have, 
I've been on the internet a long time and I've interacted with many communities and I've never had those issues and I'm not going to start having them. Right. So I like to keep my, my uh, loaner stack pretty small, just uh, out of respect for the people loaning me things. And, nice. but most of the knives you see on my channel, I still own, you know, uh, with the exception of the ones that I'm like, Oh yeah. But, uh, the last few videos, the Kukri videos, those are all mine. Yeah. Um, I love that zombie tools, Kukri. It's so cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's really my that, and that was one that they sent me. I'm like, I I reached out to them. I'm like, hey, I was like, I'm a small channel. Do you have anything that you would like to to donate to the channel? And they're like, how about this? And I'm like, oh my oh god, my yes, god. <laughs> that's so cool. So it's it just I I don't know if they understood my content and the types of things I liked, but right. um, you know, they uh they sent it to me, and it's just it's just one of my like absolute favorite. Favorite, uh, favorite knives. I actually want to buy some more of their stuff, but their stuff just... is so cool. I got to say, the 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 Mall Ninja is strong in me. You know, mm -hmm. um, I've been doing martial arts, knife related martial arts, for about twenty years, and mm -hmm. before that, I was just, uh, you know, just a, a kid who liked knives and knives as weapons. That's that was mm -hmm. always my entree because I never right. did any work when I was a kid, so I had mm -hmm. no concept. Um, and so when I've when I see, I, I, so I do tend towards the big ridiculous uh, cold steels. They're I fun. I have right. a collection of them. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. But those zombie tools, it's like that um, with an, an era of mystique to them, just because they kind of, you know, weather them and tool uh -huh. them and all that. I, yeah, I got to get Their website's funny, too, and they, they chop up PBR cans on their Instagram feed. It's <laughs> like they don't take themselves too seriously. They have bad words on their, their, <gasps> their uh, and it, you know, sometimes I'm like, I get comments where like, I'd like you to review this knife, but I'd like to not hear the bad words. And I'm like, oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like you know and these are people that probably sit there and watch self-defense video after self-defense video and i'm like and they're offended by a bad word i, do, I don't do they know ask you to comb your hair too it's just one of the things where i i try to my my channel isn't for small children but it's not um i don't feel like it's too gratuitous it's not something you wouldn't see in a pg-13 or r-rated movie so no nudity though no no please <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, what's your what's your current Grail knife? If if you're uh, willing to use that term, um, it's very short. It's a very short list. I would probably say the, and it's been my Grail. I I think I brought this up uh, one other time. It's the uh, the deadlock out the front. Deadlock. Uh, that's it's um uh, hawk. hawk hawk knife. Oh. They just sent out a thing a few weeks ago, and it was thirteen hundred dollars. I'm like, how how could I pay for this now? <laughs> Jeez, it's like how much could I resell one of these? pods for i'm like could i sell my could i sell my sabenza and i was like and i have to sell a paramilitary <laughs> yeah right i'm doing the math in my head i'm like ah that would take me too long i was like i don't have that kind of patience what else um what else i um i put in an order for a a, a kukri chopper out of uh i think k lash blades i've i pronounce it different every time i've said it i think i don't <laughs> i've never listened to somebody say the word so it's and that's the thing about pronunciations until you watch you know, the video on the person who made the knife. This is how I pronounce things. So I, it's like, I make a, I make kind of a game about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I got a, I ordered a, one of their scourge. It's like a kukri. It's, it, it looks kind of like, sort of like the zombie tools. Because, you, you had me at scourge. I, I, you know, that says it all right there. Right. Yeah. It's this, it's this large, it's this large kukri that just looks awesome. It's got a flat grind to it and, uh, it's got this big curved handle. So, um, I, I don't have a whole lot of grails. I think, I think a few out the fronts I think are cool. I don't really generally carry out the fronts on me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're just fun to just have. And they're, they're just cool to look at because they're, they're like a toy. So you mentioned uh, your Sabenza and, and I've noticed um, a little bit of derision when you, when you speak about the Sabenza, mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that knife in particular? Um, it's like, you know how <laughs> Star Wars, whenever Luke went into the force cave and uh, Empire Strikes mm -hmm. Back and what yeah. do you bring in is what you <laughs> Like the only thing that you bring in is what you take with you. Uh huh. Uh, paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah. That's like a Sabenza. It's like you, if you want to really like the knife, you're going to really like it. And if you don't, because it's not, there's nothing absolutely amazing about it. It's well yeah. made, deploys, and it cuts like a pocket knife, but it's not. <laughs> I was like titanium. I was like, I can get that in cheap Chinese knives. S35VN, you can get that in knives that are $100. Tight tolerances, you can get a, get that in, uh, you know, Chinese knives that are like thirty or forty dollars. So yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's a combination of all of those things. It's the perfect medley, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that works for people. I I don't I don't get it. 
Um, it's a fine knife, but it's not a, it's not a 500. And I think the prices are actually going up too. Yeah. I was, it, the, the reason I ask, I have one, I have the, the 21, the large mm-hmm. 21 with yep. the micarta, very standard. Mm-hmm. And I love it. And I feel like I'll never get rid of it. Mm-hmm. But whenever I pick it up and I'm looking at all the other knives, I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll carry the, the pea soup green Emerson 640 or something. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm always putting it down. I'm like, I'll, I'll come back to you later. Next, yeah. Next time I'm putting on a suit, I'll come back to you. I'll come back yeah. to you. And then when you put on a suit, you're like, maybe I want something a little smaller and a little lighter. <laughs> exactly. How about the metamorph? Yeah. it's And that's the thing is I, in fact, somebody offered to buy it off me recently. Somebody sent me an email and I'm like, you know what? No, it's like, it's a it's like a knife that you have to, it's like a benchmark knife yeah where you you keep it on hand to know what to judge things and what to expect out of other expensive knives and maybe if you own one that costs that much maybe you'll rein in your spending habits a little yeah. bit it's like that that knucklehead third kid you can't just get rid of them you know you can't get rid of them it's gotta, like gotta... it's there it's the redheaded stepchild it's like it's you're paying a lot of money for something that's like you get us something out of or you don't get anything out yeah, of it yeah you know? keep them around to learn the lesson i've i then that's why i keep it i keep it because it i've learned my lesson so where do you see the knife hobby, we'll just call it that, uh, going for you as you age? I'm assuming you're a man in your 30s or 40s. Uh, I'm going to be 40 this year. Ah, a babe <laughs> in arms. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I mean, where, where do you see this going as you get older? Um, I, I don't know the answer to like how long I'm going to be doing this channel because it could be six months or it, it could be like six years. I, I don't know. It could be it's going to be more than two days because I have other videos I have to finish. But, <laughs> That's cool. you know, if my channel were to continue to grow and get bigger, I'd probably stick with it for a long time. Um, it's it's a really slow growing channel. And uh, as far as knives go, I probably will own a lot of the current ones I have for a long time because I like them. I like, you know, hunting or, you know, fishing. I haven't been hunting in a long time because I just haven't lived in an area where, you know, I have like one gun that. I don't really use much because it's like an old 22 I had when I was a kid. Right. Um, but I, you know, I do like hiking. I do like fishing and, you know, being outdoors and camping and I, I like backpacking. So mm-hmm. I'll keep them around and maybe one day I'll live on a nice farm or something. And I, I think that it's just going to grow and I'll probably get rid of some at some point. And yeah. I, I don't know. It's kind of a hard to, hard to say thing. I know I don't plan on getting rid of any anytime sooner making a large amount of money on knives that have scratches and you know right i i ask you this uh mark because i look at my own collection which is you know it's pretty decently sized and i look at my rate of acquisition which is pretty high and yeah minus two and i'm like man if i keep this up where am i going to keep all these in 10 years or what's it going to look like and i'm like oh i'll give them to my children and uh, yeah right they'll take one or two and they'll sell the rest yeah my know? kids aren't going to like these <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i have a chest i actually have a uh, a chest i got it from sportsman's sportsman's guide i think is a website they have uh-huh. a lot of military surplus and yeah. i got a, a gun chest like a from i think the 70s like and i had it shipped here and i keep like cuz i have a lot you know a lot of machetes and a lot of fixed blades and I keep those in there and I'm going to need another one of those soon. Cause it's pretty much <laughs> like, like the money that I, I get from my YouTube, um, my Google AdSense mm-hmm. basically goes back into the channel, me buying stuff. So, you know, well, that's, that's a nice uh, system. If you, if you can make it work like that. Yeah. It's that's, that's what it's like a hobby that, that pays for itself. It's gonna, it's gonna keep growing until it doesn't. <laughs> and well, it also seems like a good way for you to stay on top of your, I don't know if it's your main art form or whatever, but you know, obviously you're a, you're a filmmaker and it seems like a good, I mean, you put one of these out every week and it's a 10 minute scripted thing. That's like making a 10 minutes, uh, you know, uh, 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 short film every week without a crew. That's, you know, yeah, there was, there was a while there where I was doing like two a week. I just can't do one a week now because, yeah. uh, the new kid is in the house. We're moving to, you know, out to California and, you know, there's just a lot of stuff going on that, um, I can't, I can't do. You know, maybe a video every two weeks, depending on how fast we get in a house when we get out there and right. how long it takes me to, to, you know, get settled into a new job and stuff like that. So, well, we'll, we'll all be looking out for them. I know, I know there are a lot of people I've been watching you grow over the past year. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's continuing to grow and I'm getting more views. It's like a slow growth, but it's like, I'm not losing people and I'm not losing views and people, you know, it's a, it's a good, small, solid audience that um, I like. 
it's a good lesson for the modern world too, where we get everything we want immediately to, it's like compound interest, this slow growth, eventually through incremental growth and change here, you know, you'll, yeah. own, you'll own YouTube. So before we wrap up, I got mm -hmm. a couple of things. Um, first, do you have a stupid knife story? Um, I have plenty and I'll break the ice with one. Uh, my 42nd birthday, which mm -hmm. was five years ago. All righty. Uh, my wife uh, had a big party for me. She's got a huge family. Mm -hmm. So they all came over. She invited our martial arts friends, our neighbor friends, and just our friends in general. It was a huge party, work friends. And uh, she said, everyone bring a bottle of tequila. And I'm a very magnanimous guy. So everyone came through the door. I had to do a shot with them. Oh, you brought me tequila. That's awesome. <laughs> So, Bad um, news. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm hammered by four o'clock or whatever it is. And um, the party is running itself. And my wife and I are just kind of buzzing around. And and later I find myself in the bathroom and now it's dark and I'm bleeding. And uh, <laughs> and and my wife is attending to me. And I ask, what, what, what am I doing here? What happened? And my wife's aunt pokes her head in the door and she says, you were outside slashing at mosquitoes. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Wow, I'm so proud. And so apparently I had my brand new uh, Endura 4 at the time, bright oh, blue. Yeah. And, and I was going after mosquitoes with it. And I eventually stabbed into a tree and ran my ha hand up onto the blade. And, uh, you know, just just lots of blood. Uh, but luckily it was a tequila party. So I didn't feel it that night. And I, I healed pretty quickly. <laughs> I would say the headache was probably worse the next day. <laughs> You are 100% correct, sir. <laughs> oh, I just got a cup of this headache is going to take three <laughs> days to go away. Yeah. Exactly. So what about you? Um, I don't have any good bleeding and drunk knife stories, unfortunately, although I, I should, right? Well, it sounds like you need to drink more. <laughs> I know, exactly. Uh, that's that's the joke with the channel is like when I do the beer reviews, people are like, man, alcoholism looks fun. It's like I I... <laughs> Yesterday, I didn't have a beer until like six o'clock last night, and I was I was home all day, and I have a fridge down here full of them. So if that's not self control, I don't know what is. Oh my gosh, man! I know I, my... have, I have a fridge over here right now, and I'm just keep looking. I'm like, when's the time? When's the time? Yeah, yeah. When when is he gonna wrap this up, man? <laughs> well, well, you were you were the new paragon for self control, at least in my eyes, because yeah. I've already had a beer, and it's only what one. I've, uh, I've been tempted. I I think I may have one soon because like I'm just sitting inside watching it snow right now, and I still got I Milwaukee's best over there. However, the knife story. <laughs> yeah. Um, the knife story. Uh, once my Endura 4, uh, it's an Endura 4 story too. It's it's not really good like yours, but um, I lost one. And that was, I had that one since like 2012. That was my first knife. And I'm like, oh man, I lost it. And I thought I had lost it. And my wife bought me a second one for my birthday. And turns out it was in this old green chair we had. And I found it like three years later. Oh. That was, <laughs> nice. So now I have two Endura 4s and I, I can't. I can't get rid of either one of them because one is like, was like my first good knife. And the other one was like a birthday present to replace yeah. one. So, you know, I don't like to have doubles, but unfortunately that's the double I have. One went to Helen back and one was a gift from your wife. Yeah. You can't get rid of either mm -hmm. of those. That is funny. Finding them in the chair. That is, that has happened to me. Yeah. They, they fall way down in there. And um, I was hoping that I'd found a, a flashlight that I lost a few years ago that I really liked, but that still hasn't fallen out of there yet flashlights at some at some point i have to have you back on the podcast to talk about flashlights because as you know a lot of knife guys are watch guys and flashlight guys mm -hmm. the watch thing i get the flashlights uh, i i get needing a flashlight and bright light and i get the the knurling and all the nice texturing mm -hmm. and, the, and the machining but i haven't quite made the jump to to life uh to light junkie yet but i i will i i, I have no doubt that's on the way a person probably just needs one good one and i think that's it you know yeah so it's i get it i I don't get the watch thing though. So, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I got, I was like, I have this phone right here that has my time on it. And lasso <laughs> too. I, can't. I was like, I don't need something on my arm too. Cause I just bang it against something. Reminding you about the fleeting nature of life. Exactly. That's why I don't have a watch. It's because of uh, my, my own looming mortality. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me, let me ask you some quick questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I got 15 quick questions yep. and I just want one word answers. Brief. Yep. This is going to give us the full complexion. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So fixed or folder? Fixed. Flipper or thumb stud? Uh, thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Washers. Tip up or tip down? Tip up. Tanto or Bowie? Bowie. Bowie. <laughs> Bowie. <laughs> Bowie. All right. I, I, if you notice when I said it, it came out both ways. I was like, Bowie. I I, it's, I've had to, I've had to re-record whole sections because of, of that. <laughs> Hollow ground or flat ground? Flat. Full size or small? Full size. 
Gentleman's knife or tactical knife? Tactical. ZT or Wii? Wii. Benchmade or Spyderco? Benchmade. Cold steel or CRKT? Cold steel. Carbon fiber or micarta? Micarta. Finger choil or no finger choil? No finger choil. Form or function? Function. Okay, and the last one, your desert island knife. One knife for the rest of your life. Mm, oh, boy. Man, this is a hard one. Um, it's like, does it have to last a long time? <laughs> no. Let's, <laughs> let's just say it never falls apart. It never falls apart. Okay. Um, it would still be a fixed blade. How about uh, an SC5? SC5. The five, you just kind of five. I, that it was it, it just was, five. it was, it was, I'm like, which now, what, what are the inches? <laughs> yeah. I'm just like looking for something that like, I know that I could use to like cut things with and beat things up with. Right. Right. Well, uh, I, yeah. I would need, I actually need a lot of time to think about that. That that's a tentative know, answer. It's kind of a son of a bitch question, but you know, <laughs> it, it is, it is also the, the uh, ultimate compromise kind of answer, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. What can I cut apples with? Well, still defending myself, you know, uh-huh. can I make a spear out of it? Can I make, yeah, exactly. Can I make a spear out of it? Yeah. It's, it's hard. Uh, yeah. That's a, I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but oh well. Well, anyway, Mark, it's been a pleasure talking to you, having you on the podcast. And I'd love to, some point in the future, uh, I know you're, you're, you got a big move up ahead of you, but I'd love to talk to you again sometime, talk about some other things. I would love to talk about, I want to do a little segment about movie scenes with knives. And I'm not just talking, that's not a knife, this is a knife kind of things, but scenes where, uh, if you, if you start looking for them, you'll see them everywhere. Scenes where little pocket knives save the day. And, uh, you know, uh, I'd love I like to it. You, I like it. I'd love to have you back on some time to talk about, you know, meaningless kind of knife stuff like that. If you're into it. Sounds good to me, man. Awesome. Well, everybody, thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, this has been Mark, the advanced knife bro. It's been my pleasure speaking with him. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, everyone tune back in next week when we'll hear another interview from another exciting Knife World individual. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.